Our last test ended with a pop, so I flipped over the ESC that I built, and it turns out, surprisingly, on the bottom, that those traces are not rated for 29 amps, and it just blew uh, one of the things there. So I beefed up all the traces, I put a wire and then soldered alongside of it. It's not real pretty, but it does the job, and we can run some more tests. It turns out that the traces were not the only problem, though and I let out quite a bit of smoke in both directions. But I have to say, once you burn those transistors closed, you do get pretty good acceleration when you plug the motor basically directly into the power supply. So what's the problem? The problem was that I'm sending a PWM signal into the op amp, which is the thing up at the top there, and that's amplifying it up to slightly above the 10 volts needed for the MOSFETs to turn on. And the op amp, this is a quad one, has four, ostensibly independent op amps in it. And when I send the signal into one, so one PWM signal is nothing, and the other PWM signal is going at whatever rate. And when I put it like this into one side of the op amp, everything's fine and, uh, and it works. But then when I do it the other way around, a little bit of the signal leaks through into the other side. And when that happens, it shorts it out and fries all your stuff. The thing that made this hard to find was that it only happens under a load, and the main voltage on the, the main rails is not going up or down. This is under continuous load. I'm kind of baffled as to how exactly this happens, but I figured it out. I switched to a better design with some other MOSFETs since I fried the other ones. These ones have a lower current rating, which is why I doubled them up, and I'm running it through a, just a little logic chip that inverts the signal and I got it sorted out, and this one works great. It doesn't have quite the current capacity because the rating is lower, but uh, it does work pretty well, so this is what we're gonna use for our tests. The tests aren't very visually engaging, it's just a flywheel spinning, but I ran a few on the 55 turn, I ran a few on the 35 turn, and I did get some interesting results. These are all my numbers, and I unplugged it at different times towards the end, which is why it tails off oddly. But the important thing to note here is that I ran the tests in one direction with the motor and then the other direction at the same throttle level. And you can see that the graphs are right on top of each other. So that asymmetry in the power output that I had noticed on the Pendulum project, for example, I'm going to have to come up with another explanation for that because the motor here at different throttle levels, even on different motors, is very even. So the timing or other things are not affecting the power output. Now we don't really care about 30 seconds in probably the maximum that I'm ever going to run this motor at full throttle for the pendulum project is one second. So let's crop this down. On the one second time scale, everything becomes very helpfully linear. And I went ahead and put a interpolation, just a trend line through it, a linear one. And we have the slope, which is something that we can use here to, to make comparisons. It's basically the torque. The true torque value would just be multiplied by a constant. And so at the top, the top line, two lines, are the 55 turn motor at full throttle. Then the next two lines are the 35 turn motor at full throttle. They have a little bit of deviation there. The ESC was uh, warm on one of the tests, which may have brought the performance down. Then we have it in the green at half throttle, and then half again, so quarter throttle, and then 30, which is like 20% throttle. When you compute the ratios for these, it's pretty interesting. The 35 turn motor has 64% of the number of turns of the 55, but it produces 79% of the torque. And then on the graph here, so that top line is the 55 turn, and all the ones below are the 35 turn. So for the 35 turn, what I'm saying here is that the a throttle of 255 equals a slope of 228. So 100% throttle equals 100% slope. And then I'm trying to figure out for the percentage of throttle that I put in, what percentage of that full throttle output do I get from it? So a 50% throttle of 127 gives you 56% of the torque of full throttle which is pretty linear, and 25% throttle gives you 24% of the torque, and 12% gives you 7. And 12%, I mean, that's pretty, I guess that's lower than the 20% I mentioned earlier, but uh, that's that's quite a low throttle that you're not really going to use that much. So this is extremely linear. It'll be very helpful, and it was interesting, too, just to see how consistent it was. So that's it. That's why you do testing. You get real numbers on it, and your impressions are sometimes not validated and that keeps you from going down the wrong path. Now that I have a much better idea of how the motor performs, I've dispelled a few myths on that. I have a better speed controller. I'm ready to go back to the Pendulum project and really make some improvements there. I've also got some other improvements that I'm going to make on the control strategy. 
and I think that all this work will pay off.